let's go ahead and and this morning we're going to really teach i wanted to turn to matthew chapter 25 i want to be faster in the first service i took a lot of time recapping last week i want to be faster in this service matthew chapter 25 so this is the thing just the way human beings are because we we are we are creature of habits although you've had a lot of the teaching you will need to go back and listen over and over again for it to pop strongly in your mind because listen to me your financial change is very is anchored to your habits and your habits are anchored to your mindset so this is what happens have you noticed every sunday you're so fired up when people say wow that that message of seven cups but you've got your salary right now have you said practicing seven cups by the way i think i have to find a way to monetize my sermons now because Someone sent a message. I told the pa- I followed the pastors on Instagram. He said, Pastor Balachi, thank you so much for the message of seven cups. I was so blessed. By the way, I've made an app and an exe- and I've made an app of it. I will soon begin to sell it. I just wanted you to know because I can give it to you and the church members for free. I said, I created seven cups. I should be doing that. And this person made an app. He said, so when you get your salary, it just goes directly, and maybe they're going to connect it to your bank account, and it becomes so automatic. I said, wow. People are learning so much online. You know, people are learning so much. And that message, you have to go back to it. If you don't know what it is, go back online and you can just look for the messages. And you know what we're doing right now? A day after the services, we just take only the message and put it on YouTube. So you don't have to go to the prison worship. Just take the oh, just the message. You just look for, there'll be two sessions of just the message. When the person said that to me, I said, that's unfair. How can you tell me you want to sell to me? This is, you know, so I'm thinking, I'm, I'm going to be really thinking so well. But, but the good thing is this. The good thing is that if you attend Harvesters, either online or the off-site, we're going to have very soon a money, uh, um, what do you call it? We're going to have a, a making money course. You know, it's a making money course you can attend. Now, for the men's fellowship, I'm going to do a free month training for the men's fellowship. You know, the women are... China, I don't know how it can work, but we're going to start with the men and probably move to the women and all of those kind of things. Praise the Lord. So the reason, someone said, why are you doing this? Because as a pastor, I know teaching doesn't change people a lot. You need to sit down with them and correct behaviors. And that's where the hard work is. And that's what Ovia does not like. You know, praise the Lord. That's where the hard work is, to change the thinking. In fact, today, that's what I'm talking about, changing the thinking. So let's talk. I'm going to start with this flower. Have a look at this flower. Can I have, you have a scissors for me? Can you reduce, you have a scissors for me? You don't, okay, that's fine. I can, this is good. Thank you. Thank you. So this is this flower. And this flower has different kind of leaves and fruits. Thank you. Thank you for the scissors. This is this flower. And this is what most of us want to do when it comes to finances. This is what most of us want to do. What do we want to do? What, so finances are results. Finances, poverty, all those things are results. So when we want to fix our finances, you know what we do? We just go to the tree and we begin to cut off things. You know? So we don't even cut off things. The first category of people, who has a makeup kit here? Makeup kit. You have a makeup kit here? Your powder, that kind of thing. You know, thank you. you know, That's this the first thing. People that really want to, you know, thank you. Is a brush there? I don't want, want, the one that has a brush. Oh, thank you. I have a brush now. Give me. I, I'm going to ruin it just to warn you. So this is the first thing we do. Um, this is the first thing we want results. Can maybe they should? Can you move this backwards a little for me? Yeah, because I want to move here, but the speaker is here and it's feedbacking into it. Just move backward a little, or move here. Maybe move here in between the speakers. Thank you. All these guys are always so helpful. Please help me appreciate them. Two of you, come, come. Let me appreciate them. Exactly. Thank you. Come, come, come. Just to also tell you, they are also very single. Just come. This guy is single. He's an investment banker. This guy works for communication company. They're single. They're all available. You know, so you can see me after the service. You're interested. Praise the Lord. All of you online, you're also interested. They also, they can travel. It doesn't matter. Oh, can't you, can't you travel? Can't you travel? Exactly. They said they can't travel. They can, they can travel. Praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is what people, when people want to fix their financial situation, this is what they do. This is what they do. Mostly people like us. These are the finances. So this, this is the roots, this is the fruits and leaves. So what they do is that they take makeup and put it over 
their brokenness. This is their brokenness. They put it over their brokenness. They start painting it. You know when they paint it, you know how they put over their brokenness? They are broke, but not to look broke, they buy the Gucci bag. They buy the Louis Vuitton shoe. They buy the Range Rover. Because they are not rich, but they want to look rich. Listen to me. Whatever you don't accept, you cannot change. If you're broke, you're broke. You didn't hear me? If you're poor, you're poor. If you're broke, it's, there's nothing wrong with accepting that where you are. Because you can change it. There's no need to deny who you are. Because people get into worse financial situation trying to look rich. If you cannot afford to stay in Nikoi, don't stay in Nikoi. If you cannot afford a place to stay, don't stay there trying to impress someone. If you cannot afford the hair that is half a million, don't buy it. <laughs> Listen to me. There was a time in my life I couldn't even afford to pay the full DSTV subscription. We used to pay the one that was 2 5 But you know the good thing? The reason why I was able to go through that phase was this. I knew it was a phase. A time will come, I will tell a story. When you fake it, when you become successful, what story will you have to tell that you faked it? You know, when you hear the good stories of how we used to do this, see, I will go to eat trees, and when I go to eat trees, they will say, rice. I said, rice. I said, chicken or beef? I said, all this chicken and beef, there's a way it affects your teeth. They said, really? I said, just serve rice. See, listen, chicken and beef can affect your teeth for real, but the major cause was that I could only afford rice without chicken or beef. I could only afford that. And, I didn't, and listen to me. Never feel bad about where you are because you're on a journey. And if someone defines you based on where you are, too bad because they will still see you in front. Glory to God. So, you don't have to. So, when people have financial challenges, they, they put makeup on it. They put makeup. <laughs> they put makeup on it. They put makeup. Why? They want to make it up to show I don't have a financial challenge. But you know, you do have. Then the other people do something else. These are the ones that think they're really smart. When they have financial challenges, they start say, let me, let, let me fix it. By doing what? They start cutting off the fruits. They cut off the fruits. Oh, let me go and start a business. Let me do this. They, they, they cut off the fruits. They are cutting off things because they want to fix their financial challenges. The problem with cutting the fruits is this, or the leaves, just a function of time. The leaves will grow again because the root is inside. Listen to me. What makes people great and thick is not in the fruit, it's in the roots. What makes people prosperous is not in the fruits, it's in the roots. If you want lasting change, it's the roots you have to change, not the it's the roots you have to change, not the fruits. Once you change the roots, the fruits will change. If you change the fruits, the roots doesn't change. The fruits will still keep painting the same thing. And guess what? The nature of the roots is that the root is what you don't see all the time. All of you can see the leaves, who can see the fruit, none. And the only person that can see the root. So the, and I'm saying so because the invisible and intangible things are more significant and more real than the things you see. They are more real. Because someone like, oh yes, I know what to do. I'm going to invest. That's why you invest for three months and you break down. Because there's no root inside. There's no root inside. You don't have what it takes. Many of you, so today we're talking about root issues now. Root issues. This is a, so why, have you found that when you start the business after six months, you're tired? Have you found out why? The reason why you're tired is this. Because all you did was to fix the root. They said do business. You put a new leaf. Business. But there's no root inside. It dies. Have you found out why you cannot save consistently? Because there is no root. So what people are trying to do is that they keep fixing. They keep fixing the, the, the leaves and fixing this and fixing. The same thing when it comes to church. When they say tight, listen to me. The moment I preach about tithe today or next week, everybody, oh, I need to tithe. But what about when they don't preach about tithe? You forget because there is no root on the inside. Lasting change comes by roots. Trees that have roots don't easily move. <laughs> Trees that have deep roots don't easily move. So if you want to change something, leave the fruits, leave the leaves. Let's go for the roots. 
What is the root? Remember, the root is never what you do. It's the things that are unseen. So let's look at this. So the, today, I want to talk to you about the roots. You know, so this is why I'm talking about thriving in recession because even though there's recession, once you have roots, it will not affect you because recession is an atmosphere. The roots will keep you anchored. Praise the Lord. It can have some effect, but it will keep you what? Anchored. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 25. Oh, glory. Are you excited already? If you're online, it's blessing you. Go ahead and invite your friends to join us on Instagram. Invite them to join on Facebook. Tag your friends and say, honey, you need to join this. Call them to join. Praise the Lord. All right. Matthew chapter 25. We're going to read about roots now. Roots now. Root. Not root. Women. Roots. Roots. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew 25 verse 14. The Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servant and delivered unto them his goods. Now, Jesus was teaching here. What was he teaching? He was teaching using a story to demonstrate eternal principles. He said, this is how this works. How does this work? He says that this is how God functions. This is how his kingdom functions. And God gave unto one five talents, and he gave unto the other two, and he gave unto one one. Look at the next line. To every man according to his several ability. This is one of the fundamental principles of abundance. What is the principle? To know that I've been given from heaven something that can make me have abundance. And it's a conviction. It's not something they teach you. You must know, no matter how poor you were born, no matter how poor your parents are, no matter how poor things are, no matter the country you stay in, no matter where you live in, it's to know deep down within, I have been given something. And the reason why is this. Let me show you the reason why. I just want to give a little example. Where's someone from the choir? Um, yes, Naomi, will you come, come with your bag? I, I want to show you something. Because it's very powerful. It says, everyone is given. Not based on their face, not based on their shoulders. Everyone is given. Come on with your bag. Please, can you look for your, my phone in your bag? You, you can have my microphone. Can you look for my phone in your bag? No, sir. Why? She's not even trying. Because my phone is not in the bag. Okay, what about your phone? Is your phone in the bag? It's, it's not in the bag. It's difficult to look for something you don't know you have. It's difficult. If you don't know that you have been given something that can translate into abundance, into wealth, you will not look for it. So the people that look for it, you wonder, how come they think this way? The reason why they think that way is they know something different, that I have something. That thing can be small. That thing can be in the raw part. That thing might not be untapped. It might be a potential. But I have something. The question is this. Have you taken time to look into your life before and say, I have something. What is it? Thank you, ma'am. Have you taken time to look into your life and say, I have something. What is it? And this is what the Bible says in the book of Corinthians. He says this. God gives us seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Let's keep going. The Bible says this. And see what he gave them. Watch, watch. <laughs> this is very powerful. The Bible says, and God gave unto them according to their several ability. Meaning that what? What God gives you per time is the management of what you had previously. You are the one that thinks no one is seeing. God is seeing it. God is noticing you a waster. God is noticing you an investor. God is noticing you are generous. The Bible says, God gave every man. So, in terms of capacity, the one that God fired, God fired because he was a better manager of resources and he had better capacity than the one that God won. The one that God won, not because God did not like him. Because I was always wondering, hey, may I not get one in life? But it's not something I pray about. It's something I demonstrate. He says, God gave them five, two, according to their several ability. Question, if God sees how you're managing your finances currently, will he give you some more? I've never had to take a debt to run my life. Even when I was, my monthly salary was 5,000 naira, I'd never had to take a debt to run my life. 
Because it didn't make sense to me. If I borrow for tomorrow, how will I pay for tomorrow? How will I pay for next tomorrow? It's funny, you borrow to buy air, you borrow to buy clothes, you borrow to buy shoes, you borrow to buy, you buy all those things. Don't you know that tomorrow's bills are bigger than today's bills? All of you that are young, let me tell you something about being young. You feel as if you have more money tomorrow. The bills in your future are bigger than your bills today. All of you that are single, there's something that most parents don't tell you. It's called school fees. School fees is a big, it's a big, it's a big statement. It carries weight. September, you will see parents struggling. It's not a demon, it's school fees. Glory to God. So, the Bible, so the Bible says this, and he that received that, now take note of this, he that received the five talents went and did what? Verse, verse 16, you read in your Bible if you don't have, if you can, he that received five talents went to what and did what? He traded, watch this now, so although he had talent, what did he have to do with the land to multiply? He needed to add value. That is the concept of trading. You must learn. You must master the act of turning potential into value. That's where the money is. Value is not what you want. Value is what people want. Something people want and are willing to pay for. He says he took five talent and trade debt with it. Listen, someone has five fingers, but they pay her hundred thousand naira every do, uh, every every month for what for modeling for swarovski jewelries the reason why is that she has talent but she now knows how to trade all of us have five finger have not been paid hundred thousand for my fingers before praise god some of you have bald head some people have paid for bald head because they advertise some hair product or they advertise some hair gear what they've done is that they've taken what they have. What you need to do is that you have something. How do I trade it? How do I trade it? And trading it means how do I take this thing and make sure it adds value to people in such a way that they can pay for it. And I'm saying this to you because this is the part that the church is missing. We know how to pray. We know how to fast. When it comes to adding value, that's where the problem is. So I began to talk about that, that financial prosperity has three legs. It has the legs of there's grace, there's what? Skill, and there's what? There's a state of mind. And under the skill, I broke the skill down. There's the money-making skill that has to do with, I talk about, you know, high income skill, based certain scalable businesses, and investing. And someone says, and ma money management. Money management talks about the seven cups. And the third one will be how to multiply the money. And that's the most difficult skill, actually, because it takes a lot of intelligence and knowledge how to multiply the money. But someone said to me, he says, you didn't really talk to us about how to invest. Tell us what to invest in. I said, well, that's someone's job, and that's people that are legally paid to do that. But this is what you need about investment, just a guide. There are three types of investments. There's high, in, high, high risk, medium risk, and what? Low risk. So what's high risk? Any investment that's giving you 30%, 40%, 50%, 100% money, those are high risk. The, the risk is very, very high. The, the, it's huge. Sometimes it's not a percentage. It's 50% per annum. It's a high risk investment. Do you agree with me? Yeah, yeah. There's a, what, what a medium risk? Medium risk, maybe 20%, something like that, 20, 20 something. It's, it's still a lot. What a low risk? Low risk will give you about 10% downwards. But the good thing is this low risk gives you what? Low returns. But guess what? The tendency of losing the money is also what? Very low. So you talk about um, fixed deposit, you talk about um, um, treasury bills. Those are things you can't really lose your money on. Real estate. Medium risk. You know, they'll give you medium returns. But the risk of losing is also what? Moderate. Then high risks will give you what? Very high returns. But those are the returns, you, the investments you do. You back up with serious fasting and prayer. You know the person you invested with, you're using police to be police, checking them up and down, checking them up and down, checking them up and down. Because, because high risk. So someone says, don't do high risk. I don't think that's a good advice. Uh, that's not good advice. The way life is. Bible says in the morning, cast your seed. In the evening, cast your seed. You don't know what that will grow. 
most of the time when your high risk investments work it can pay all the returns of medium and what low risk at the same time yes or no yes, sir. exactly but well, the problem is that if you lose the high risk which is very high so what do i advise people put a small percentage of your income in high in high risk percentage of your investments so depending on your age if you are above 50 just keep everything in medium and low because you should not be taking risk above 50 praise the lord you should not be taking big risk above 50 you know especially when you come from our own culture you know our own culture is quite peculiar there's no government house there's no council flat if you put it there you lose it to build this god but if you're 22 put ah, what if you lose everything you'll gain it back at 25 you know what i'm talking about i'm not saying do everything like that to her so <laughs> So that's low risk, medium risk, and high risk. I remember an, I, I, there was an investment that was giving me 120% every year. So I did it for one year. And when I did it for one year, after one year, I was not greedy. I went to the company and I said, I'm satisfied. I've got to 120% this year, giving back my money. The, the person that only was on that note said, why, why, why are you tired of making money? I said, I'm just okay. Not that I'm tired, I'm just okay. I'm just okay. I took my money. Three to six months after that, that company folded down. All the other people that joined lost their money, lost their capital. I got my capital back. I got my interest back. So I said, wow, that's the grace of God. But there's all the time I, time I put my money in one place in Ibadan. You remember that? Wonder Bank in Ibadan. I knew it had tendencies, so I put in a small amount. Ladies and gentlemen, till tomorrow I'm waiting for the dividend. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so I'm just saying to when it comes to finances, there are skills that you need to have. Okay, let's go deeper today. So Matthew chapter 25. So the Bible says this. Bible says, see, see, see Bible, what the Bible says. Let's jump quickly. Verse 20, the Bible says, And when the master came back, and he that received five talents came back, and said what? And delivered five more talents. And what did he say? He said, Behold, master, I have gained beside five talents. See, see what it says. He says, it's amazing because God even has expectation of growth from us. I love God. He has that huge expectation. He expects you to start a business and expects it to grow. He expects your career to grow. It's, it's a good. He came back and he says, I've gained five more. And see what he said. He said unto him, well done. Good. Did you see how some of you, you'll be like, why did they want, if you're not growing, what's wrong with that? Because God expects you to grow. You are designed to grow. The more you grow, the more fulfilled you become. You can't feel fulfilled without growing. So he says, good and faithful for servant. He says, thou hast delete, um, he says, um, thou hast been faithful over little things. Did you see that? I will make you ruler. And this is how God promotes people. If you are faithful with what is small, God will give you a little bit more. But let's jump to the, to the person that had one talent. You know, to the person that had one talent. And the Bible says in verse 24, And he which had received one talent came. And I want to talk about the, this one I want to talk about. You're going to see why he didn't touch the money. But I wanted to see the deep reason why he didn't touch the money. He that received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you were a hard man, a difficult person, reaping what you have not sown and guarding what you have not strawed. And I was afraid. And went and hid the money in the earth. And lo, here is what is dying. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you didn't read the story, you would think this person, this story is unlazy or is unfruitful. But the person, this story is not lazy. The person not fruitful. If you check the root, at the root of it is a mind state of fear. It's a mental state. The reason, see, why I'm teaching this is this. After everything you've heard, what are you going to do? Most people might do nothing. And the reason they will do nothing is not because they are lazy. It's just a mental state. This person did not say, Lord, I didn't know what to do to multiply your money. He didn't say so. He didn't say, Lord, I didn't have the time to multiply your money. He didn't say so. He said, I was just afraid. What was the fear based on? The fear was a mental state that says this. What was the fear saying? The fear said this. It's easier for you to lose the money than for you to gain more. So because he had that fundamental thinking, what did he do? He thought the wise thing to do was what? To keep the money. I want to ask you a question. Why is it so difficult for you to invest? Because in your mind, 
car. Invest. Invest. I will just lose this money. It's a mental state. And everybody, everybody has a financial mental state. The challenge is this. Your financial mental state determines your financial behavior. It determines, it determines everything. It determines your financial behavior. For example, have you wondered what the African financial state is when it comes to money? Who knows? The, the way African things when it comes to money is that the Western world needs to help us. We cannot help ourselves. Everything, we're going to IMF. Everything, we're going to World Bank. Everything, we're going to Russia. Everything, we're going to Europe. We can't create vaccine. They must create vaccine for us. You know, our brain is second rated. That's the way. And unfortunately, it rubs off on all of us. Our minister of health traveled abroad for health treatment. Praise God. It's not funny. The minister of health that should be in charge of providing health infrastructure is traveling abroad for health treatment. You, you, you know the reason? The reason why they cannot even conceive that it's something bad is because of the mental state that do you really expect us? And, and this is the thing. We keep talking about government and government and government. If you like, change the government hundred times. We're just changing the fruit. What we need to change is the root. That's why no matter the government, it will produce the same thing because it's a root problem. It's a root problem. It's a root problem. And where does this start from? It starts from you and I. When you think of your business, you can see you can be a serious businessman and think of your business in terms of naira. The global currency is dollars. If you are a millionaire, you are a millionaire in dollars. Ooh. Because we use all this naira to oppress one another. I'm a millionaire. Brother, change your money to dollars. You will be humble. It's the way we think. It's, so, this very powerful. It's the way our mindset is. It, there's a state of the mind. And the state of the mind is gotten from a lot of things, from how we think, how we behave. For example, you know, when they describe rich people, you know how they describe them? Stinking rich. Filthy rich. Stinking rich. You know what that talks to us? The state of our mind. When we see people that are very rich, they can't be clean. Why do you think people fight rich pastors? No, you can't be a pastor and be honest and be rich. You're doing the wrong thing. Why? It's thinking rich. It's filthy rich. If a young girl drives a range of beside you, hmm, she, it's only God that knows how many people have slept with her. Because in your mind, that's the only way she can get the fine funds. See, question. If your state of mind is negative about finances, you'll never attract finances. That's what I'm going to. This is why. So the state of mind. So this person could not. This one lady could not trade. Not because she didn't have capacity. Not because there was no opportunity. No, but the reason why she could not trade was this. Why could she not trade? She could not trade because of state of mind. Have you. Listen. Let me say to so you. How many of you know what you can do within the next. This year that can make you make more money. Hands up. Right hand up. If you're online. Right. I do know. If you do. Raise, raise up your right hand. Why are you not doing it? state of mind because it just affects you state of mind see state of mind is so powerful you will know what to do but guess what the willingness that's what it is let, let me give it let me give a state of mind let me give you some example this one way back this one way back when you went to secondary school did you do a subject all over that school in nigeria called for the maths before you did it did you hear about for the maths no, 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 no. Before you did, did you hear about Father Matt? Yes. Oh my God. My, my seniors in secondary school used it to terrify me. Every time they were, they say, ah. He said, are you going to be a science or commercial student? I said, science. They say, ah, you will do Father Matt. Father, ha, Father Matt. Ha, for, Father Matt. I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> then they said something, they said, ah. In Fodama, there's this formula. Almighty formula. Ah, what's almighty formula? You see, it's a formula that any equation you can't solve, apply it. It will be solved. Listen to me. When I was meant to choose either Fodama on that subject, with 
the first for them at class, the fear. I, see, it, it, I like math, so I love the challenge. Do you know what happened? I did for them at for about, I think about six months. I withdrew myself for further mind because it was not that math was difficult. It was just the state of mind. Why? The state of mind even affects how I feel about the subjects. So once your state of mind is negative about finance, how oh, feel the rich, stinking rich. Once money opportunity comes to you, there's a way you will avoid it just because it's a, it's a mental state you carry. That ah ah. Do you know, let me give you an example. I've met women that say things like, I always perform, I always tell my husband do. I don't want us to be too rich. The reason why is this. I don't want us to be too rich now my husband will change. Have you heard that before, yes or no? Why? Because in the state of mind, what's the state of mind? Money corrupts and changes people and makes them evil. Not that money makes them righteous, money makes them what? Evil. And I'll tell you the truth. The lack of money has made more people evil that they are born some money. Yes, are you here today? Yes, are you here today? Yes, we need to change our mindset. And, and this is the reason I'm teaching this. So, when it comes to finances, we, we, we want, so, you're wondering, why can't I, you see, I, I, want to, I want to start the business. I want to save. You find out, no matter what I try to do, I'm not able to do it. And the reason why you're not able to do it is because of what? Of the state of mind. Some of you will say things like, money is not important. Oh, wow. Is that true? Of course, that's not true. Money is not the most important thing, but money is important. And let me ask you a question. If you have a friend that she knows she's not important to you, will she be close to you? And I wonder why money is not close to you. Because you have, in your state of mind, money is not what? Important. So if I'm not important, let me go to where I'm what? Important. State of mind. Is money the most important thing? No. But to say money is not important, it's also not right. So we have the state of mind. So, see, so it's, it's, what, it's what my friend calls it this way. We have negative association with abundance and wealth. So some people, some people are careful. And let me tell you something. I'll, I'll tell you my own story. So when God called me to be a pastor, I really, church was young, I, I was struggling financially. But you know why I didn't want to do business? I was really scared that I would succeed in business. I would, see, my fear was not that I would not succeed in business. My fear was that I would make so much money from business, I would stop being a pastor. Because if you make all this money, and these people are taking your time, praying, it's so difficult, why would I be a pastor? And why did I say so? Because I had the money fear that money can corrupt me. Money can change me. Money will not make me a sinner, but it can take me away from the things of the ministry. And that's why. And, and you know the thing. Until those inner conflicts are resolved, your journey to the world will be bumpy. Because those things will create bombs on your journey. And I had to get to overcome it. Question. After the message today, can you write state of mind that you have that is holding you back? Oh, I'm too young to become a millionaire. <laughs> I love that because people talk about too young. But guess what? You're too young, you're too young, you're too young. Next thing they say, you're too old. I've never found they say this is the right time. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Are you getting blessed today? Yes, sir. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And I'm saying it because, everybody look up here, please. Most of you, let me tell you the truth, what you have to do to succeed is just to take the first step. That's all. See, I've seen this over and over and over again. Let me tell you, when, 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 I, when God came to start this church, the first service, I was so nervous, I didn't wear socks. I'm telling you, I was so nervous. But I haven't started a church and several churches, I don't get scared again. Because I've seen it. See, the most of you, let me, tell you, let, let me back up. The most important, everybody look up here. The most important breakthrough in your life is your first breakthrough. Once you have it, the rest is history. Satan will fight you tooth, nail, dog, dead, tick, can 
kind of fight to make sure you don't have it. You know why? If you can have that breakthrough that establishes that God is faithful to you, that God cares about you, that God will give you a victory, you can establish it. There's no going back. Listen to me. The moment David could establish, I can kill a bear. I can kill a lion. I can kill a tiger. The day he saw Goliath, he says, who are thou on second side Philistine? Saul said, take my armor. He says, oh, you don't understand. With your armor, have you killed bear? With your armor, have you killed tiger? With your armor, have you killed lion? He said, me, with bear hands. He said the same thing. He said, because when I killed bear and tiger, it was not me killing them. It was the energy of the spirit at work in me. That same energy, take it. Listen to me. Once you make, once you do your business, make the first hundred thousand. That's it all. Once you make the first one million, that's it. Once you make the first ten million, that's it. Once you make the first hundred million. Once you just cross hundred million, everything becomes numbers. It becomes a number game. But what has happened is that most people have not had the opportunity to have that first breakthrough. Let me tell you something. It's the first breakthrough that is tough. Once you have it, that's it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Well, you know, you, when you go for a visa interview, you can tell those that don't, have never been there before. You know, because every time they sit down, they go after, will they call me now? They will come here. They will come here. Those that have been going all the time, they will not even, see, people are going for interview, they will wear tie, they will spray perfume, they will lose makeup. You wonder, you are going for a visa interview, not fashion show. But because they lack self-confidence, they want to make it up. The people that have had visa multiple of time for a new one, they will get there. They will even wear sleepers. Because they know that what they are looking for is not in my looks. The question they want to ask me. There's a way that your results will give you confidence to say, this is it, I'm going. Are you here? Oh, wow. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. The Bible says this. So, this is state of mind. Paul went through a difficult time. And see what Paul said. Unless I should be Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation that was given unto me. A thought in the flesh by the message of Satan was given to buffet me. That I should not be exalted above flesh. I'm just reading fast. Verse 8. Paul said, I began to pray. Verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord three times. I may depart from me. And he said, the Lord said to me. So he was going through some tough times. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. The state of mind of Paul originally was that, why am I going through this tough time? Why are things so difficult? The moment God gave revelation, Paul said, God, God told him, he said, mm. he said, the reason why you think is a tough time, but this is your opportunity for growth. Do you see that? In prayer, God changed his perspective. He said, do you think it's a tough time? This is your opportunity for growth. The moment Paul heard it, see the next thing Paul said. Paul said, most gladly, therefore, I will rather glorify in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. He said, therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmity. What does this mean? When you have the right state of mind, People say it's not working. You say, I see the opportunity. Because what you see is dependent on your state of mind. People are wondering, why was I born in a culture like this? The reason why is this. You were born because you were born for the opportunity at this kind of time. Someone says, this country is not working. Guess what? The biggest opportunities are there are there when it's not working. Why? Because for it to work, there must be a cycle of opportunities, money, contract that must be open. When it's working, the opportunities are almost saturated. So, that's what I'm saying to you. But the only way you will see this is having a change of mind. A change of mental states. If you will you come? Let me talk about you for one minute. Just to back up this message. If you're a Patricia, come, I mean, your wife, take your phones, please. Don't leave your phones and things behind. Some people are not godly in church. Okay. So this is where his wife is over there, Patricia. When did you move to when did you move to Nigeria from the UK? When? Yeah, when? Um, April 2013. What? April 2013. April 2013. So he moved in here, and his major thing was that he was coming to provide power, solar power. So sell so solar power. Then he noticed something that solar power is expensive. People could not buy. They could not buy solar power. And he said the problem. It's not that they don't want to buy. They can't buy. He said, so what we should do is to source for funding 
and give people solar power in such a way that they can pay it as monthly installments. So much so that what they spend on diesel and nepa bill will be what they will use to pay their solar installation. And after two or three years, it will become their own. So he told me that my, my business moved from a solar power business to what? To a finance business. To a finance business. Did you see all of a sudden the opportunity change? The only reason why he saw that was the state of mind. If it was somebody else, it's too tough. Let's pack up and go. Someone said, oh, wow, I came for a solar pay business, but what I see is what a financing business opportunity. We don't have a problem as a people, as a nation, as an industry. All the problems are opportunities if we can see with a different state of mind. So just imagine. So they created a new model where like, how much do you pay as Nepal bill, diesel? That's how much you pay. Okay, be paying this every month right now. That's your And after three years, you'll get it. And this is someone, human beings amongst us. No flesh and blood. No angel. He didn't jump. Look at him. He's, he, he wants to see his, mock life. his wife is over there. You know, they're doing together. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me, let me close the service quickly. Let me close. So, what does God do? So, this is what you have to do. What I'm saying to you is that the opportunities are there. Someone says, ah, and what do you call it? The security problem in, in Lagos. What does that mean? Security complaint. That's what it means. Security complaint. Ah, they say they kidnapped them now in Lekki Road. Ah, we now provide bodyguard services with gun. If they try, we blow them away. I, I'm telling you, before, you know, how much do you charge? 500,000 per head. Oh, we'll pay, pay for it. Opportunity. But what makes you see opportunity or no opportunity is the state of mind. Are you here, somebody? So how do you change your, How does God change our state of mind? See the first thing. As we pray, God sends wisdom. That's what happens. God sends what? Wisdom. How does God change state of mind? God sends wisdom. So, 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 this what, so how do you change state of mind? See, this is what happens. As you begin to pray, as you begin to pray, there will be an inflow of wisdom. Inflow of wisdom. That's why, that's why this June 1st to 3rd prayer, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be serious. It's going to be heavy. The reason why is that we need inflow. We need the state of mind to change. We need to see from a new dimension. A lady walked up to me. I told her when I started preaching. She's about 30 something. She said, just to let you know, last two months, I made my first $1 million profit. I was shocked. I said, what? I said, this thing works, sir. When God says in Proverbs 10 22, the blessing of God make it rich and adds no sorrow to it. Let's put it on the screen. Proverbs 10 22. The blessing of God make see it's a state of mind. It's not the economy that makes me rich. It's the blessing of God that makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. One of the famous socialites called me. He said, I saw something about your church on Twitter last week. I said, what did you see? He said, you guys gave out 2.5 million naira last Sunday to those that didn't have. I said, yes. He said, ah, people come to give tithe and offering in church. Your own church is giving tithe and offering to people. I said, because we are blessed to be a blessing. You don't understand. Once you know you have, you don't hoard. Once you know, no blessed person hoards. You release her. One person came out, was up. The guy was up. Sent me a message. He said, I've never seen this kind of thing in my life before. I thought I came out for prayer. He said, I opened envelope 70,000. He said, Ah! He said, My generation must pray for you. But the reason why is that when people don't have, that's my opportunity to be a blessing. I told you, people keep treating the fruits, not the roots. The root is this. What is the state of your mind? Do, do, see, if I know I'm blessed, if I know I'm blessed, I will begin to take actions that will help me manifest the blessing. I will begin to take action that will help me manifest the blessing. This week, we are giving out four million. Oh, yeah. So I'll say, ah, where is all this money found? It's your the more there's poverty, there must be grace. What's four million for? Go online. This week, we announced that we wanted to empower 40, 40 business um, people with 100,000 each. Because every time
time I see the need, I don't see the, I see the opportunity. You know what I say? I, I'm just saying that these 40 people, I will give some of them 100,000 today. In the next five years, they'll come millionaires. And they'll say, Pastor Balaji, you were the one that started this. I see the opportunity. So when they come back in, in five years' time and say, Pastor, just bless you. Take this 20 million. So I'll not be angry with my harvest. Where were you when I was saying my seed? Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. This year, God willing, this year we're going to start public, public office spaces for free. If you want a business, come and take a space today for free. So, as the, they say, things are difficult. As things are difficult, that's our opportunity. Question, what's your own opportunity? Some people just talk, talk, talk on Twitter. Talk, talk, talk. People don't change countries on Twitter. People don't change countries on social media. People change countries by taking steps. You change financial destiny by taking steps. By take, start the business. You've had too much. Start the business. I spoke to you, the pastors. You know, I thought about the seven cups. You know, have I said in this service? Have I said what happened in this service? Someone wrote to me. And he said, Pastor, thank you for that powerful teaching. I've now developed an app, an application on how to use the seven cup, connect to your bank account. I want to start selling it, but I thought I should let you know first because I got the idea from you. Because I got the idea from you, I'll give to your church members for free. I said, ah, should I not be the one that is selling this something? I'm preaching, someone, someone is in church and he's taking the message because of opportunity. Saw it online though. You are in the service. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the reason why is it, is, the, is, a men, is a mind state. So what does, how does God change our mind state? God gets you to a place of prayer. You know why? The moment God gets you to pray, he begins to open spiritual portals so that information of superior level begins to be downloaded into your spirit. That's the first thing. So information, there's an opening of spiritual portals. The second thing he does is that, the second thing, he begins to ask us to do what we not do. He makes us givers. Why? Let me show you that. Let me show you why he makes us give us. Proverbs 11 verse 25. Act 20, 35 and Proverbs 11, 25. Wow. Okay, we need, we need, we need to do that. Which one, you, which one do you have? Act 10, Act 10, 25. And Proverbs 11. Act 10, 25. Act 10, 20, 35. Proverbs 11, 25. Let's see what the Bible says. What is it? Let's read. Want to go? Huh? See, 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 see what God is a very wise God. God says, when I want to change, because in the state of your mind, you feel as if there's no, there's a problem, there's need, all of those kind of things. God says, what I do? I change the mind. I, I change the state of your mind by helping you become a giver. How? The liberal soul, the person that is given, the heart is fertile. I want to ask you something. Have you ever written an exam before that you knew the answer, but examination you didn't remember yes or no what happened to your mind that time your mind was not at peak performance your mind was not what at peak performance at peak performance when it's fatal your mind knows those things god says the more liberal you are you move from an inner image of of stinginess and neediness you move to a liberal state of heart what happens to you is that you become peak performance so your ideas so when people say i'm giving the thing i'm helping them i'm not just helping them i'm helping myself because i'm trying to activate myself at peak performance the liberal soul the liberal soul the liberal soul the liberal soul is made fat so i move i change my mental state by generosity listen to me because every time i'm generous i does i assume a position of kingship that's what happens to me have you noticed them a generous there's a there's a sense of fulfillment it's it's that state and that's the state where big ideas that's the state where big i this big ideas huge i still start sinking into you why the liberal soul is made fat, and now says that he that is watered shall also be watered. You know, as a Christian, one of the things you must make up your mind is this: I'm going to be very consistent in prayer, and that's why this next level prayer thing we're taking it serious. This week we're taking our prayer serious. But this my given when it comes to my titan, when it comes to my offering, no matter how behind I am, I'm going to get up again. Why? I need to put my soul in a place. That's why. 
Act 20 says something. He said, it's more, this, this is, when I saw this Bible as a, as, as a young Christian, it was crazy. Act 20, 35. He says what? He says, Jesus said, he says, according to the word of Jesus, how he said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. It was confusing. How can it be more blessed to give when I'm losing the money and the one that's receiving, taking the money? But I didn't realize, once you give the liberal soul, your soul is fertile and that makes you grow. So when you see all those billionaires give crazy, they know what they're doing. Some of them are start snatching away their money, but some of them, it's the soul. It's bringing some fulfillment, some growth to the soul. How do you change your state of mind? Three things. By prayer, by what? By giving, by taking actions. Take actions. Take actions. Take actions. See, take actions as soon as possible, as soon as today. Let's pray.